chop, 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 village. I'll chop all your peepees. Bad, 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 bad. Reapers, what's is good? It's your boy Laser. Use the visor back with another scary reaction video. He's on this scary content. So, team, deliver that for you guys. In this video, we're the top 15 scariest things kids have said. Guys, there's so many fucked up kids out there that have said weird ass shit. We're that straight into it. If you enjoy scary content and use more scary videos to feature, it's amazing to like button. You subscribe and tickle the notification bell icon. I'll stream every night on Twitch. Go check out the streams. You're fucking amazing. Let's dive straight in this video. Number 15. Mm. I wake up to find my three year old standing by the bed, <clears throat> staring at me, inches from me with a huge grin on Dude, his Batman, face. Dude, Batman, he's just me he like He just stares just like and me. grins. What are you doing? I finally say. Nothing. Still grinning. Bro, he looks like a very friendly kid. He just wants to play knife bow, bro. Come on. At this point, I realize he's got his hand behind his back. Are you holding something? No. I look away. He's hiding our largest carving knife behind his back. Number 14. My three-year-old nephew was at my cottage. He asked me numerous times about the girl over there while pointing at one of the back bedrooms. Oh. The place is small, and there's definitely no one there, so I just dismiss Dude, it. Dude, that's a very friendly, uh... I feel like I've seen this before. That looks like a nun, bro. Is that a nun? Oh. It's a really active imagination. Then some friends are visiting, and they have a daughter around the same age. She has never met my nephew. Twice in one day, she asked about the pretty girl while pointing at the exact same room. Definitely caught me out, and I didn't know what to think. <laughs> then at Christmas, my family was over at my place, and my nephew points at a picture of my wife and asks if she's coming to visit us here. You said she's coming inside of you? Is that what you said? Or does she just stay at the cottage? My wife died 10 years ago. Number 13. So a friend of mine was six years old when she- Dude, y'all ever just be chilling, you know, you got the family gathering, bro, whatever. And then this lovely, uh, gentleman shows up at the house uninvited. He's like that one person that always shows up to the parties without the invites, bro. Nobody wants them to be there. This guy, but this guy on the other hand, oh, look at his teeth, man. Look at those razor teeth. I'm sure they totally wouldn't penetrate my skin if I had any physical contact with them. I'm sure if they touched my pee-pee, it wouldn't cause any uh, sort of um, bleeding. <laughs> it would actually be a massage. You ever scrape razors against your pee-pee? Uh, she told her mother that the lady who used to live here told me that she hates the wallpaper and that you're covering her note. My mm -hmm. friend's mom just thought it was make-believe rambling and forgot about it. Well. 12 years later, when the mom is redecorating and taking down the wallpaper in the attic, she finds a suicide note scratched into the wall. The friend's mom freaks the fuck out and calls my friend and starts asking- Y'all ever just take your own blood, bruh, and then put it on the suicide note? <laughs> if she remembered anything more about the woman who spoke to her, my friend starts to recall the woman and starts to freak out, saying she only remembered talking to her in the attic. Number 12. A friend of mine and her husband bought what is considered an old house around here. What is that, bro? Are these the things that like you put something in it, and it like burns? I've seen like movie deaths of like people being thrown in these type of things, bro. Wow, this one looks pretty small. The opening looks small. I don't know if you can get in there, but I've seen like those furnaces, bro. That's gotta be one of the worst ways to die. I mean, being burned to death, um, my ancestors can relate to that, but just the idea of like being thrown in one of these, oh man. Western Canada. Not many houses over a hundred years old. They were renovating the basement one day while I was visiting. I was down there alone with their son, who's barely two at the time, and could not speak in full sentences. He took my hand and led me over to a brick chimney-like thing with a rusty metal door on it. He looked up and said, that's where dead babies go. Dude, I can I throw my uh, feces in there? <laughs> I was horrified. Firstly, because, like I said, the kid could barely talk, let alone say uh, the, something like that. He's just like me. And I'm kidding. I could talk straight. Well, sometimes I mumble, but... Uh, bubble guppies. I doubt he even knew what dead meant. 
I'm positive that no one would have told him that, and there were no older kids around that would have said that as a joke. Still creeps me out to this day. Mm. Number 11. My brother grew up being terrified of water. I'm I mean, the idea of just being frozen to death, bro, like freezing to death in water, like hyperthermia. I'm gonna be feel like freezing to death. I feel like, I mean, they're both bad. Bur burning to death, freezing to death, they're both terrible deaths. They're both slow as shit. But I think, I don't know, I feel like low-key freezing to death would be worse, bro. People say freezing to death, like, it's equivalent to, like, a bunch of, like, needles just, like, stabbing you pretty much. I don't know. Like, the idea of, like, dying from hypothermia scares me. I know the Titanic water was, like, what? I remember I went to, like, this museum, bro, and, like, they, it's cool. I think it was, like, at the, I don't forgot which place it was. But there was, like, this museum I went to, and it had, like, the Titanic water, bro. And I got to, like, put my finger in that shit to, like, feel the water. It was really cool. Like, I got to feel what the water, like, actually felt like. It was, like, a, this uh, this little sample thing. I don't know. It, like, tells you the temperature of the water, and, like, you just dip your finger in it. And holy shit, man. That, I might, I couldn't even keep my finger in that water, bro. It was so, like, I feel like I would have got a hypothermia just from keeping my finger in there. It was so bad. It was freezing. The water was, like, really cold. It felt uncomfortable. I had to get my finger out of there like less than five seconds. It's crazy to think that th th people were like in this shit. Like, oh fuck. Four years older than him, and during the nightly battle for bath time, when he I think like the worst part about the Titanic, bro, was like how it like just sank. Like it, it like split in half, and then like so there was like people at the top, and they just slid down, bro, into the water. I don't know, man. The idea, like nowadays, it's like if a ship sinks, it's like people are more prepared. There's lifeboats, all that shit. So back then, it was like people weren't like really, I don't know, just the idea of dying from a sinking ship is one of my worst fears. I feel bad. Like, it's just crazy to think. Nah, man, it's crazy. The Titanic, man. He was a boat. And you know what else is crazy? We talk about how the Titanic was such a big ship, but nowadays it's average compared to all the, it's smaller than compared to most average cruise ships nowadays. Crazy. Three or four, I asked him why he's so scared of water. Being a water baby, as my mom put water it, water baby. I just what the don't fuck? Understand. Who the fuck he says looked it? at me, and I remembered this word for word. I was on a big unsinkable ship. We hit the biggest iceberg, and then it was really busy. And then I got really cold and wet. I went to a warm, bright place and waited until my next family came. My mom heard it and decided bath time was over. The creepy thing is that my brother was born on April 15th, 1992. The Titanic sunk April 15th, 1912. Number 10. When I was about four, I would remember talking to Mr. Peterson whenever I was at my grandmother's house. He looked like a hobo. Dude, he's very cute. Very cute. Yeah, I'm sure he showers uh, once a week. From the Great Depression and had a guitar and sang the old timey blues. He told me that he died when he fell off a train he was riding while drunk on moonshine. The fuck? I stopped seeing him when I was about six. Anyway, six months ago, I found my dad's old acoustic guitar and started playing. And my little cousin told me, Mr. Peterson is proud of you, and then left. I don't know what to think. Number nine. While changing my daughter in front of the open closet door, she kept looking around me and laughing. I asked why is the narrator talking like that? It's Loki kind of making me annoyed in the way the way he's talking. I don't know. After what was so funny, she said, "The man." To which I replied, "What man?" She then pointed. Why is she doing that? Was like, <laughs> y'all ever just get in, uh, hanged by a news bro, and then while you're being suffocated, that's like. <laughs> at the closet and said the man with the snake neck i turned around and nothing mm. was there i'm afraid to look into the history of my house to see if anyone hung themselves in that closet at least she wasn't scared number eight my kids catholic school dude is that a uh, frankenstein frankenstein if he was human whoa look at his eyeballs man crazy he's looking very cute Dude, we got a nice gentleman right here. Wow. Over a hundred years old, there's a basement under the gym that's used for storage. I was subbing once, and during recess, one of the kickballs goes down the stairs. A little girl was standing at the top of the stairs yelling, just throw it up to me. I went over and asked who she was talking to, and she replied, that big man down the stairs. I went down, and nobody was there. 
and it was the only way in. I asked some of the other kids if they have seen the man before, and they said, yes, but sister told us not to talk to him. I asked him to describe sister, and they described a nun, and they're having- Dude, nuns are creepy as shit, man. Y'all ever just be chilling at night, bro? You look in your closet, oh no, it's a nun right in my peepee. -pee. On some real shit, man. I feel like, I remember seeing like the show for the nun, bro, and I was like, yo, this looks good, and then I went to it, and it was dog shit. I've been nuns at the school in the 40 was dog years. Shit. Number seven. When my son was little. I just imagine like just waking up, bro, and then you see like this fucker just breathing on you. I can't imagine the smell. Dude, imagine if Rick woke up from his coma, bro, and then uh, he sees this fucker right next to him, bro, trying to bite him, and then it ends already. Yeah, I remember there was like a huge theory, and like it was confirmed fake, but um, there was this huge theory that like the entire apocalypse or the entire show was all just in Rick's mind, and he was like still in a coma. Like, people thought, people said that apparently, like, he was in a huge coma, like, the entire show. I don't remember. I, don't, I think it was debunked to be fake, obviously, but it's like, there, there was so many cool things. Dude, The Walking Dead, man, I miss that show, man. I'm gonna be for real, it's just sad what happened to me. I know it, it ended a while ago, but it's like, it's just sad how it went downhill, man. It was like, it was so good all the way until fucking, um, season seven, bro. Season seven, people say season, season like five was the last good season. Nah. I think season seven was the last good season. I remember after season seven, that's when I started losing interest. I loved when Negan joined, and I loved the entire season seven plot. After that, when like season eight, when like all the whisp whisper shit started coming, the all that other shit, dude. You want to know the one thing I hate about The Walking Dead, bro? See, at first it was so interesting, man. When they were in like Atlanta, bro, dude, there will never be another show that gave me the same feeling as Walking Dead in the early seasons, bro. I remember being so excited watching that shit it was so good in like the early seasons i remember like when they were in like atlanta bro and like fucking oh uh, merle t-dog all their was that his name t-dog i forgot all the original members man the original members crazy all of them died pretty much and people say rick died rick didn't die but he uh you know he was te technically technically died but um in a way but it's like i remember like in the early seasons it was about zombies and it was just interesting but as, like, the the show progressed, bro, it just started becoming dog shit. Like, I feel, I'm gonna be for real, like, The Walking Dead in a nutshell, bro, it's like, it always just felt like it was, I said this so many times, it always just felt like it led to nowhere, literally. Like, it always just felt like it was going nowhere. It was like, ooh, back here, ooh, back here. Like, it just never progressed. Maybe three. He used to do this weird crawl where he would slide his forehead along the floor. That was pretty creepy in itself. Then one night, he crawled across the hallway into my room like that and stood up a few inches from my face and made a weird meow sound. Meow! He went to bed with me and went to sleep. He's just like me, bro. I'm a cat. Meow! Another time, he was freaking out about a monster in the basement, so we went down and saw nothing, of course. As I turned out the light and headed upstairs, he said, He's behind us now. I might have peed a little. And possibly the creepiest thing he did was one day, I scolded him for misbehaving, so he hid his head under his blanket. I pretended I couldn't find him by saying, where is my little Carson? He slowly Carson. the blanket, and oh, with a dead evil stare said, Carson is gone. I am Rick. I'm certain he's Rick. possessed. Rick, you woke up from your coma, man. You guys remember that one episode? I remember in The Walking Dead in the early seasons, you know, when they were in Atlanta, bro. I remember when they had to, like, put the guts on them, bro. Because, like, apparently, like, the guts, like, it would make them blend into zombies. But then I remember it started raining, bro. And apparently that's, like, when the guts would start falling off and the zombies would start suspecting something's off. I remember that shit. Bro, they were, the zombies were scary in the early seasons. I remember they were fast, bro. Were they fast in the early seasons? I can't remember. I just remember that the zombies used to, Dude, like, the show was so good, man, when it just, like, felt unpredictable and, like... Goddamn the zombies. It was about zombies. It just turned into human wars, bro. It was so fucking ass later in the other seasons. It just became like the zombies were a side thing and it just started focusing only on human wars. It sucked. And like in the early seasons, it was unpredictable. Like you didn't know what was going to happen. That's what made it so interesting. And then as there, the seasons progressed, it just started becoming boring, bro. Like they were always just, oh, in Alexandria, oh, human war, repeat, blah, 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 scavenge for resources. It became so average and boring. Like it just... 
I know, I'm going to be real, there's a lot of people that actually did low-key like the Whispers and all that shit. I stopped following it after, like I said, Season 7. Season 7 was, like, the last time I, I, as soon as Glenn died, that's when I started losing interest. And, like, the Whispers came, and then it just started becoming, like, I don't know. I remember, like, they visited that ocean town or whatever, and it just became dog shit, bro. We never knew any- The graveyard, the, the, I remember the fucking junkyard shit, like, all that fucking bullshit. And Rick's, as far as I can remember, still don't never figured out where he picked up that name number six okay bro like i refuse to believe motherfucker skins really be looking like this bro like you're telling me your skin is this like crusty and like old bro what the fuck ripley more old than a uh, fucking uh, statue story time when i was a kid mr rand used to come into my room four or five times a week he'd talk to me and tell me stuff and how he was killed in World War II. See, Mr. Rand was a figment of my four-year-old imagination. Uh. Anyway, one day, I was nine or so, Mr. Rand stopped showing up. He's cute. Fast forward to about three years ago, and my son, who is five at the time, walks out of his room one night at about 11.30 and says there's a man in the room. Fast forward to about three years ago, and my son, who is about five at the time, walks out of his room one night at about 11.30 and says there's a man in his room. I flip out and run to his room to find nobody, to which he says, Mr. Rand says you can't see him anymore, but he's okay. Number five. I'm not a parent myself. Look at possessed kid. A friend of mine has a four-year-old son who lives with his mother. One time, he would have been nearly four, Another of the mother's housemates had a litter of puppies and was in the process. Yeah, I love puppies, bro. Puppies are so cute. Puppies! I remember John Wick, uh, Keanu Reeves was like, puppies, that, that was so fucking adorable, bro. I love Keanu Reeves, man. I love Keanu. Keanu's like that guy you just can't hate, bro. Dude, I'm, the most likable people are always the most humble and realist, man. It's true. ...of trying to find homes for them. The kid put one of them in the front loader washing machine with some laundry and managed to set it on the spin cycle, then went back into his room across the laundry to play. My friend, the kid's dad, was visiting at the time and heard the machine going. He went to investigate, then saw the puppy and realized what had happened. No, what? I want this. I hope this kid fucking uh, gets burned alive. Nobody likes you. Motherfucker put the puppy in the goddamn fuck. Are you shitting me? Wait, is this like based on real shit? I think it's, it is. Bro, anyone that does anything harmful to animals, if I ever find like an animal abuser in real life, bro, I'm gonna put my fucking knife, bro, and I'm gonna do this slowly in their skull. I'm gonna do it slowly. I'm gonna make it a slow, painful death. Anyone that abuses animals can go fuck themselves. You're, you're not welcome on this earth. You're a waste of, uh, Air, man. Waste of air. Animal beezers are no... I'm gonna be for real. An animal beezer is no better than a fucking, uh... No di correction. No different than a fucking killer or murderer, bro. If you if you abuse animals, if you can go fuck yourself. And no, nobody likes you. You're a waste of breath. If I ever come, in, come across with an animal beezer, bro, I'm putting this knife and putting it up their skull slowly. Nobody likes you. He figured that the kid just didn't know what he was doing and quickly removed the dead puppy to spare his son being traumatized. The kid saw his dad walk past the doorway, went to check the washing machine, and then asked him, Where is the dead puppy, daddy? Number four, my mom's dad died ten years before I- This is, this is, no, this is not it. Is this motherfucker about to eat the baby? Not the baby, not cannibalism. I was born. I was about six or seven when my parents divorced. The day before my mom told me they were divorcing, apparently I was at the kitchen table drawing or something while my mom cooked tea. She cooked said tea? I cooked tea what? Stopped instantly and looked toward the Wait, that's that's what people say, cooked tea? I didn't know people say cooked and tea in the same term. I thought it was just heat up tea. Cook tea? What? Door as if Well, I technically you are cooking it. You're heating it up in a way. You are cooking it, so... I heard something. I stared for a long time, then giggled, turned towards my mom, and said, Granddad says don't worry, everything will be okay, and he oh. won't let anything bad happen. I then began humming and went back to my drawing. 
My mom says it's the single creepiest thing that's ever happened to her, and I have no memory of it happening. Number three, when my daughter was three, one day she. Dude, I need a, I need a fucking girlfriend. You know, obviously this bitch ain't legal, but it's like I need a, I need a fucking girlfriend that wants to dress up as like some crazy lunatic, bro. Like just make, make your eyes fucking possessed as shit. Just look like some demon, demonic monster. Like, look, look like this bitch right here. I'm gonna show you. I'll just show you my distro kid real quick. Fuck, 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 fuck. Hurry. I'm gonna show y'all. Look like look like this bitch. I need I need a bitch that wants to look like this. Like dress up for this as Halloween, bro. Like a grudge girl, bro. This is this is I don't know why, but just the idea of some fine ass shoddy dressing up as like some grudge girl like this, bro, for Halloween or some shit would just give me a full erection, bro. Holy shit said to me don't you remember a full Mom? boner before when you were the daughter and i was the mother they came and chopped all our heads off chop 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 the chop whole village i'll chop all she your peepees bad, 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 bad. every time she said the word chop i was so taken aback all i could think to say was fortunately sweetheart i don't remember the head chopping her i'll chop your fucking dick off bitch Once was well it happened and I remember it really well. Number two, my daughter said to me that there is a woman who watches her watch movies in her room and sleeps on the ceiling above her bed when she sleeps. She also says that it does not like me and wants to eat my heart. My kid watches Elmo and fucking Dinosaur Train. Dude, what the fuck? Why did the narrator say it like that, bro? Fucking Dinosaur Train, what? Guys, you guys ever just watch Elmo and fucking Dinosaur Train? <laughs> Is that how he said dinosaur train? He's ever just fucking uh, burn Elmo on fire? <laughs> burn like my ancestors. I'm the boy in the striped pajamas. <laughs> Where in the hell did she get this from? Number one. When I was young, like maybe two years old, my grandma was in the hospital dying of cancer. Obviously, I had no idea. Dude, y'all ever just heat up your... Uh... <laughs> what was going on but apparently one day my mother and aunt were watching me i suddenly looked at them and said only one grandma they kept trying to convince me otherwise you ever just uh put your pee, pee on like the holes right here bro on the phone none inside it and then our person on the other line has a pleasant surprise y'all know that uh i remember when i used to believe that like if you spit through like the i remember i used to believe that like you can like make shit go through the other side of the line <laughs> Oh man, funny times. That no, I had two grandmas, but I kept repeating that line over and over. Then the phone rang. It was my uncle calling to tell my mother that my grandma had passed a few minutes ago. Got no Damn, guys. Well guys, as if this video, hope you enjoyed it. Guys, which one of those things that kids have said was the most scared of you? If you enjoy scary content, you want to give these features you need to do. I'll see you next one. Peace!